the Azusa Street Revival. It's a historic revival that happened in Los Angeles, California. And it was led by William J. Seymour. Uh, he was an African-American preacher, and he was the son, the 34-year-old son, of a former freed slave. And then there was leaders uh, such as uh, uh, Jenny, Evans, Seymour, and other incredible women who stepped in at a time when women in church leadership was quite taboo, but they step in their incredible influences in this revival, and then over the past century of the movement of the church. And we see Seymour and seven other people who begin to seek God and they wait on God and then immediately they hit the ground. They begin to speak in other tongues and they begin to praise God loudly and there's this outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this room and it flows not just in that room but it goes out into the neighborhood. It goes into the city and there's this stirring around the country and people begin to show up and it's pouring out of this place. And for three years, there's this incredible revival. The blind see, people are healed, diseases are cured, immigrants show up and they hear their native tongue from uneducated congregants. And then there's people of different ethnicities that begin to intermingle and different races who come together at the height of the Jim Crow era. When everyone is segregating, that's the rule of the day, but the spirit shows up and it brings people together as one and they begin to worship together and then, and then the encouragement of women in leadership 14 years prior to suffrage even coming into play for women in the U.S. And so there's this amazing multicultural movement that happens at Azusa Street. Here's the thing though, they didn't set out to be a multicultural movement. They set out to seek the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. And when they were baptized in the Spirit, guess what happened? People started coming Amen. together. A Amen. multicultural movement Amen. began to rise up and ethnicities came together. And, and races and people of all different backgrounds came together and young and old and rich and poor and male and female all came together under one spirit in one body. Acts Amen. chapter one. We see the disciples going to the upper room and they're fasting and they're praying and they're seeking God. And we come to our text, which is Acts chapter two today, verse one says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. This passage is constantly looking backwards and looking forwards at the same time. And we see this description and it's the description of, of wind and of movement and of earthquakes and of shaking. And it calls us back to Sinai. Sinai was where God gave the law to Israel, but Pentecost is where God gives the spirit to the church. So everything that God chose to do through the law for Israel, God chooses to do for the church through the Spirit. Amen. Verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation over, under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language. Are you kidding me? Amen. This is crazy. They each heard their own language being spoken. Now, let's go back again so we can go forward. There's a parallel passage or a reference passage that goes back uh, into Genesis. It's called the Tower of Babel. And it's found in Genesis chapter 11. And it's this story about the people of God who decide to build the world's first skyscraper. And so they build this thing up, but their intent in building it was to come at the same plane as God. They desire to build it in the heavens, and there's an issue here. The issue is it's a, a people trying to become God issue. Mm -hmm. But there's a more precise issue that's happening as well. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God gives one of the first commands in all of Scripture, which says uh, he calls us to be fruitful 
and to fill the earth. Now, we think of filling as, you know, pouring water or liquid and filling up a bottle, but this is more of a cloth covering. To fill the earth is to migrate. It's to expand. It's to spread out. But here, the people at Babel, they're called to fill the earth, but what do they do? They huddle. In fact, they huddle up. Is that where we get huddle up? They huddle and they go up, right? (laughs) Instead of expanding out. And God sees this rebellion, and what does he do? He mixes up their languages. Why? Because it forces them to go out onto the mission that he had called them to. It forces them to expand, to multiply, to be fruitful all over the earth. And so the miracle of Acts chapter 2 is bigger than Acts chapter 2 when we see the context. Because at Babel, the people were seeking to become God and to avert his mission. But at Pentecost, the people were seeking to be like God and to get in sync with his mission. At Babel, people were perplexed because they couldn't understand each other's language. At Pentecost, people were perplexed because they could understand each other's language and culture and they get insight into people who are drastically different. It's not just a miracle of speaking. It's not just a miracle of tongues. It's a miracle of understanding. Amen. Amen. And so here we are seeking to become the beloved community and races and, and ethnicities and backgrounds are colliding together. Holy Spirit, come. And give us understanding today of another who is so different. Listen, we get when we when Nina and I get together with other couples, when we get together with other people, when we hear about other relationships and we see broken relationships and hurt in relationships. Here's the refrain we often hear. We don't hear the other person is is too flawed. They're no good. We don't hear, you know, they don't let me talk. We hear this, and, and let me know if you relate you don't understand, right? Yeah. No, 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 you're not, you're not understanding where I'm coming from. Come on, don't tell me you haven't said yeah, that before, amen. right? Hey, amen. You don't imagine the healing that would come into relationships if we just decided to be students of another person. Yep. If we decided to be students of another culture, students of another race, amen. if we got outside of ourselves, and listen, we hear the other person, We hear the other side, but it's a different language, isn't it? And I don't know what you're saying right now because it's making no sense, logical sense, or any other kind of sense to me. Holy Spirit, come, right? Amen. To give us the miracle. That's what this is. It's a miracle of understanding. To seek understanding is not merely hearing someone else's argument or knowledge. But it's the power to comprehend, empathize, and discern their experience. You say, how can I even understand this person who is completely irrational? Holy Spirit, come. Mm -hmm. How can I even get in the same room with this person who has such different ideals or beliefs or, or political understandings? We need you, Holy Spirit, don't we? Give us knowledge and understanding of the other. There's a lot of sermons out there that talk about the multiculturalism of Acts chapter 2, but don't talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And there's a lot of sermons out there that talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but don't talk about the multiculturalism of Acts chapter 2. Listen, he, he did not decide to divide these up. No, they are intermingled and intertwined intentionally Amen. and beautifully Amen. because we need both. That's right. We need you, Holy Spirit. And we are called into the community that is beloved. Spirit of God, come. Here's how our theologian in residence put it, Peter Hardwick. He said, the spirit is not God's cute way of affirming diversity. He is God's power in the world to make a people that will be what every other people cannot be, which is unified in diversity. The beloved community is a constantly failed endeavor in our culture. Why are we taking the cultural talking points and action points? No, we've got to get to the spirit today, y'all. Amen. Amen. We've got to Amen. seek the Holy Amen. Spirit in our hearts, 
over our minds, over our bodies. We need the, the Holy Spirit is 100% absolutely over and above the foundation to this calling that we are pursuing. Last week, our multicultural team, they brought the high heat, didn't they? So good. Thank you, pastors, Marion, Joel, Laura, Dave, incredible word. And Laura challenged us a couple of times. And, and at one point she said this, uh, she said, family, we are pushing through and we are defying the world's message that we should all stay in our own lane. That is not what Jesus called us to. We will keep going back to the Sermon on the Mount. We want to be, as it says in Isaiah 58, repairers of the breach, restorers of streets to dwell in. Luke eleven thirteen, 13, Jesus says this, if you then, though you are evil, know how to live, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? God didn't say to go win the war on your own. He didn't say to go win the political battle and get all the political power that you can get in your possession and then bring people together. He said, not by might, Amen. nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 12, that the people come together and it says that they were amazed and perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? What does this mean? One of the things that I wanted to share with you is going back to the Azusa Street, we see there that people ask that very question. What does it mean to see this outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Just like they did in Acts 2.12. What does this mean? What does it mean that we see flames and wind and people speaking in different tongues? Now, before I get into what does it mean, I wanted to set the context for everyone to say, what were people saying who were observers of this activity during that time? So one of the things I want to share with you all is that quite often the work of the Lord looks like foolishness in the eyes of man. But I want to tell you something. It is never that way. Whatever the Lord does, that is not foolishness. He will make us look foolish. Okay. Right. So this is what was said at the time about Azusa Street from the L.A. Times. Meetings are held in a tumbled down shack on Azusa Street. And the devotees of the weird doctrine practice the most fanatical rites, preach the wildest theories, and work themselves into a state of mad excitement in their peculiar zeal. Mm. Colored people in a sprinkling of whites make up the congregation, and night is made hideous in the neighborhood by the howlings of the worshipers mm. who spend hours swaying forth and back in a nerve-wracking attitude of prayer and supplication. Mm. They claim to have the gift of tongues and be able to understand the babble. Now, we're going to come back to Azusa Street, but I want us to make sure we understand something, beloved, that God's work never comes the way that those who are watching for him even yeah, expect, okay? Right. That's good. So I want to make sure that when we go back to Acts 2.12 and say, what does it mean? Peter really breaks this down for us beautifully. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, he turns to the word of the Lord that was spoken through the prophet Joel and says this, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. In your sons and daughters will prophesy. God's power is limitless between men and women. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. God's power is limitless between the generations. Yes. Mm. And everyone, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Mm. God's power is limitless between socioeconomic yes, classes. Come on. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God's power is limitless to save. Prophecy, vision, and yes. dreams 
all empowered by the Holy Spirit, give us a direct path back to God for the sake of salvation. Mm, come on. That is what we see in Acts 2.12, beloved. And we realize something. Peter, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, has the keen insight, the keen insight to know his audience is questioning and saying, this looks like some foolishness up in here. And he says, no, 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 no. This is not drunkenness. This is not drunkenness. But this is the word of the living God being fulfilled in your hearing. Mm. Let us just sit in that for a moment. Let us just think about that. Do we believe today that Scripture can be fulfilled in our hearing? Yes. Lord, I, I want you to sit in that and ponder that. Because I would like to encourage you and say, yes, we should believe that. Not because I say it, but because Jesus clearly outlines it and tells us in Matthew 5, 18, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. The Holy Spirit has always demonstrated the power of God. What type of power and to what end, right? God's power transforms the physical world by first transforming us from the inside out. That is the power of the Holy Spirit in us, working yes. through us. And again, this power, just so you understand, Jesus prophesied this and told us about this in Acts 1.8. He says, but you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Right? So I want us to soak in that, that Jesus said that and, he, and we see it fulfilled in Acts 2. And I realized that those disciples, just like us today, I'm sure they said, Jesus, now we're getting it. When you was here with us for three years, we kind of missed some stuff. But now we're seeing that what you spoke is true. And I want to encourage you, beloved, that that is still true today. Yes. What he spoke yes. mm -hmm. is true. Come on. So if we're talking about having a beloved community, I want you to know that it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that this is ever even possible, mm -hmm. to what Pastor Joel was already preaching. Now, in Acts they go through the wind, the flames, the tongues, and people see the fulfillment, because Peter points it out, of Joel 2 in their sight and hearing. Now, one of the things that I find truly amazing is that God is showing us this power. And in the Greek, there's a, a unique word, dunamis, for power. And, and I love this meaning, and I just want to read it to you all here. And it says that its inherent power, its very nature, in its very nature, is power, dunamis, meaning its very nature, its inherent. This is God. God's very nature is inherent power. Therefore, the Holy Spirit, when we talk about inviting the Holy Spirit in, we are inviting God's power to again do what? Transform, renew, and refresh yeah. us and make us new creations in the likeness of Jesus Christ. So this revolution that we saw 2,000 years ago was then played out again in 1906. And beloved, I want to make sure you understand something, that this is one continuous line. Mm -hmm. that you too fall in this. From Genesis to Revelation, you fall right. in this with Azusa Street. Mm. And what I want to encourage you with is that when the Lord talks about that last verse in Acts 2, 21 that I, I read to you, for the sake of salvation, mm. call on the name of the Lord. And I want to just clearly look at everyone that's here and say, have you called on the name of the Lord for the sake of salvation? That's mm. all you have to do. Call on his name to be saved. When we think about gifts, beloved, I'm curious for you when you're thinking about a gift and bestowing it upon someone, who should have the honor and the glory? Is it the person who receives a gift or the person who gives a gift? It's the gift giver. Mm. We often, because we realize that gifts are not owed. You don't demand a gift. 
This is not something to be presumed or assumed on someone. So we see that our Lord and Savior, our God, has offered us the gift of salvation through his son, Jesus. Yeah. And I want to encourage you again, as clear as I can be, please accept that gift. It is when we let go of control, invite Jesus in, and are filled with the Holy Spirit that his power is able to work in and through us. Ernest, when we went to uh, endeavor to build the DC Dream Center, yes. we thought we, we were in control. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we were not in control. Not at all. <laughs> Learn that quick. And we went down this road, and I tell you what, that was a crazy moment. Uh, I think the pinnacle of our not being in control <laughs> was this ANC yes. meeting that we went into, and we're trying to get our building permit, right? right. And this is the major hurdle that you got to go through. And we go to this meeting, and uh, it, was, it was the craziest meeting, that I, official meeting that I've ever been to. And we go and we share our story and they're in a, some kind of power struggle internally, leadership wise. And so they say, well, we don't even know you. We don't know if the neighbors want you here. And so no, you, you can go ahead. And so we leave and, and we come back the next month which, with a hundred of our closest neighbors. Amen. And you gotta get the picture because you know, if you've been to ANC meeting, it's 15 to 20 people. So we show up with a hundred people and this place has happened. Oh, okay. And we come in and we give our presentation and it was a great idea to us, by the way. Yeah, I don't think they great. liked the 100 people showing yeah. up. But, <laughs> Wonderful. but we give our presentation and then they start talking and a couple sentences in <laughs> say something to the effect to you and I and to our neighbors like, and you people. people. Is that, yeah, you people. No, no. No, no, no. Don't say that. Don't <laughs> and say that. it got a little crazy. It definitely. And it, it got a little out of control, and it got rowdy in that place. It definitely got rowdy, and God rest her soul. I'm thinking about Honey, who stood up and who just said, oh, hey, man. I don't know you. You talking about you people. I lived in this neighborhood my whole life. I ain't never seen you, and these people are the ones that's been here. And I remember that I said, hey, man, give it to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're sitting there, and you're getting beat up, uh, and they're shouting, and they're yelling, and, and this is now between the ANC leadership and people who are in the audience yelling back and forth. And it was like a tennis match. We just watched, boom, boom, right. boom, boom. Right. And I remember thinking to myself, just sitting there like, Lord, help us. You got that we right. need it right That's now. where we started our one word prayer, Jesus. Yes. 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 Right. Jesus. Yeah. And we went home that night, and I don't know about you, but I was praying in the spirit. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you what, and we got home, and then we talked. Amen. Remember that conversation Amen. we had? And I remember one thing about it. We both felt like we had been in a fight. Right. Or, that was inaccurate. We felt like we had been beat up. That's what it was. That's more specific, That's right? Yes. And yes. like physically and emotionally, it yeah. was intense. It was. And then we felt in prayer prompted that number one, we need to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Amen. and let Amen. go to the Holy Spirit's process Amen. in this thing. Amen. And number two, we, need to, we needed to resolve Amen. to keep showing up, to keep loving, to Amen. keep pushing. So we resolved to pray, we resolved to act in boldness, and we resolved just to keep loving. And it's, it's so funny because four months later, after we had resolved, one of the members of the ANC came to our Christmas party. And this is for the whole neighborhood and people coming to the Southeast White House at the time and we're having a blast. And you, you could tell when someone's there reluctantly, like it's like the political thing to do, like, ah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm here, show my face. And it was like, oh, okay, thanks for coming. <laughs> and uh, they're there and we're smooth. You, you're going around, you're talking to folks. Two hours in, they come up to me and they have their toothpick and meatball on it, and they're, they're looking, and I'm like, okay, I wonder what's the Good meatballs, though, man. We <laughs> serve some good meatballs. Off, off the chain, because yeah. <laughs> we always spice them up, a little Southeast style. We use sweet baby Ray's sauce, just so you know. <laughs> it tastes really good. But anyway, it was funny, because I'm thinking, like, what is about to happen right now? Our last interaction was not a good one. And they looked at me directly, squared up, you know, not sideways, just squared up, and said, hey, I'm sorry the way I treated you the last time you, you were at the meeting. I've come to realize that you guys really are here for the community. Amen. It was a blessing to be able mm. to hear that. Amen. That's a miracle of the Holy Spirit that we witnessed. That was a breakthrough, Amen. Bro. That was a breakthrough. In we the had heavens. a breakthrough. Amen. And that moment 
was Amen. worth more than a building permit. Got that right. Amen. Because we weren't just trying to build a building. Amen. We were trying to reconcile people to one another, Amen. to us, to God. And so in one moment, we see the mission Amen. and the purpose of the Holy Spirit showing up, not because of us. No. but because the Holy Spirit had his way. And that moment wasn't just about that moment. That moment was about submitting to the Holy Spirit. That moment was about faithfulness and relationship. Yeah. That moment about, was about doing the work of listening, of stepping back, of reconciling to our sister and to our brothers in the community, of loving well. But that moment was about the Spirit showing up and reconciling. And when reconciliation took place, a month Amen. later, we went back in there. Amen. What was the vote? I can't remember. Yeah, it was uh, eight, eight votes. I think we almost had unanimous. I think one person was, I, it was zero, bro. Zero. I don't know I what you're say. talking about. Yeah, it was, was eight saying. zero. Yeah, we were was. unanimous, yeah, we were baby. Unanimous. That's what I thought. That's what I thought we was like. Right. I don't think Honey voted against us. but No, no one voted yeah. against us. So we had unanimous, and that opened up favor and opened up the ability to reach out Amen. and bless our city. Amen. And now to reach into an overlooked, under-resourced part of our city. And over this past year, yeah. we got to give God yeah. praise Amen. and the spirit okay. honored um, over many years. But let's just look, give a snapshot of this past year. Over 56,000 meals, I think 57,000 meals Amen. that we served. Uh, over 106 thousand resources were given out. I think it was around 540,000 pounds of food, of groceries, of healthy vegetables, of, of food getting into people's hands. Amen. That need, we can go ahead and give God praise Amen. right there. That's you got okay. that right. Those boxes are heavy. And I just got to call out uh, many of you who have given, who have invested. You invest regularly. And I just have to call you out from National Community Church, from the Dream Center. Amen. Thank you for Thank your you. investment. Thank it you. is being multiplied for the kingdom of God. Keep investing. Keep sowing seeds because God is bringing the water. Amen. And the fruit is rising up. So thank you. Number two, I got to call you out, man. Oh, thank you, bro. I want to thank you. Executive Praise Director Lord. Ernest Clover. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I got to say this, and we didn't talk about this, because I got to call you out. You are a man of faith. Thank you, bro. You have the gift of faith, Ernest. And I am so challenged by you, my brother. And when other leaders and nonprofits were stepping back, were huddling up, come on, somebody, were huddling up, you said, here we go, we're about to cover, we're about to expand, we're about yeah, to get out, crazy. we're about to be fruitful and multiply, not yeah. for us, oh. but for the kingdom of God Amen. and for those in our city. And through Amen. this past year, you led strong, so I just want to honor you. Thank you. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Praise the Lord. Being a good brother, Thank man, you challenged Praise me. Praise the Lord. Thank you. The Holy Spirit Amen. at work, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. We have talked about the work throughout this series. We've talked about using our words wisely. We've talked about listening well. We've talked about understanding our own belovedness, finding our gift and playing our part, knowing the love of Christ in our own hearts, in our own hearts. But I want to remind us today that none of that works if the Spirit doesn't fill it, Amen. if the Spirit doesn't show up. The Holy Spirit is the goal. He's the gift. He is the strategy. Amen. And then the outcome is the beloved community. So family, Amen. seek the gift of God. I can't think of a better symbol uh, for reconciliation, Amen. for the Spirit of God bringing multicultures together at the D DC Dream Center than the table. Amen. And so we want to invite you to the table today. And so if you have elements, begin to gather those. If you don't, why don't you go get the communion elements and prepare? Because in just a moment, uh, we're just going to come to the table and we're going to celebrate. I want to invite our worship team to come. And uh, for 20 plus years, we've served a, we've served a three course meal at the Amen. DC Dream Center, the Reconciliation Amen. Lunch. And uh, it's been so awesome. It's a table just like this right here. That Corey, who was out on the streets yep. in a gang, 
finally found community and he found salvation in Christ and became a part of our community, just like you see in the painting. And he found Jesus not long before he met Jesus in person, in spirit. And it was around a table like this that Baxter G, that Sammy Morrison, that Scott Demick came together and began to be an example of the beloved community that would go out in Ward 7 and 8 and be such an incredible example to so many of our city. It's around a table like this that brings us together in Christ. And so today we come to the table and we give Christ our hearts. And it's the table that brings us together. Uh, the New Testament believers were not about coming together and just trying to find a church experience that satisfied their every need. Nope. They were about coming together in communion and in community. Amen. And so that's where we are today. So go ahead and take the elements. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and after he had given thanks, he broke that bread and he said to the beloved community, he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. I want to do something a little different in this moment right here, right now. I want to ask you if you can to go ahead and break the bread. Christ's body was broken for you. He was broken for you. Whoever's listening out there, it was broken for you. He sees you. He values you. He knows you today. And he sees you. His body was broken. And so now I bless this bread. I bless you. My brother Ernest, I bless your family. I bless your marriage, your children. I bless your dreams today, my brother. I bless your hurts. I bless you in your pain. I bless you in the name of the Lord, and I bless you today. Through this time of receiving the body, I bless you in your hurts. I bless you in your brokenness. I bless you in your areas of chains that Christ would give you freedom, that his broken body would open up possibilities that you never have seen before. I bless your mindset that has been held captive today. Find freedom. And so I bless you today and I bless this bread. Let's receive the bread together. took a cup and he gave thanks and he turned to the beloved community and said this is the covenant of my blood do this in remembrance of me for it's for the forgiveness of sins for many Joel I declare over you a renewing and a washing in the blood of Jesus Jesus Lord, I pray this over Joel's marriage, mm. over his family, over his home, Lord, over his dreams and visions, just not for this church, but Father, for the generations that will come. And Lord, I also pray over everyone that is here right now, who is under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they would know the power is in the blood of Jesus to wash away all guilt, all shame, all envy, all yes. jealousy, Lord. You will make them a new creation. This is the new covenant that we partake in, Lord. So I pray that people will boldly proclaim that today I will be renewed in his blood. Please take the cup. For those of you who are on our online community, and today you said, I will call on the name of Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The angels in heaven are praising right now for you. So I want you right now to go to your chat function and raise your hand. And for those of you who are here in this room with us right now, and you're saying, yes, I have proclaimed that Jesus is my Lord and Savior this day, please come down here and talk to the pastoral team. 
because we would love to pray and connect with you. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful that you have given us this opportunity to be here this day, to be able to preach the good news, to be able to realize that we come from a long story that we can trace all the way back to Acts, all the way back to Genesis, Lord, as we were able to do today. And Father, we realize that you set this story in motion before you set the foundations of the world. So Father, I am praying for those who have claimed to come upon you and see Jesus as their Lord and Savior, Lord. I pray for their strength in the Lord right now. I pray that they would know something about the power of the Holy Spirit, that they did not see it under a man sitting under a banyan tree someplace, but no, in the act of community, Lord. So I pray that they would realize that there is power in your church, in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we ask you to give us wisdom and discernment as we move forward as a beloved community. Grant us your favor, Lord. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. And we continue to pray over the beloved community. All of us, every single one of us are made in the image of God. And so we call out your love across our congregation today. And I can't help but call out the AAPI community that is a part of this beloved community, continue to pour your love into so many who are hurting right now, who are frustrated, who are angry, who are sad, who are, who are fearful. God, we just call love and we stand with our community today. And now I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit yes. to fill each who would desire you, who would go after you in fasting and in prayer. And I call out today that we would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to stand up, to step out, to receive and be empowered with your word and with your spirit that is for this day. I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. And we say in agreement, my brother. Amen. Amen.